Good morning. We're here to worship our God. And that continues to look different and that continues to feel like a challenge. And yet there is something about God's spirit that just says, hey, I want to be with you. And there's something in our hearts that says we just want to be with God and with his people as much as that's possible. And even though we may not be all together and we may not be sitting side by side and having our coffee time um, we're so grateful that we can worship in this way and gather together. And that is worthy of thanksgiving. And at the same time, we recognize that things are not normal, that um, life feels broken up, life feels disjointed, and that creates in all of us a different need for healing and peace, whatever that looks like. And so we've come to worship our God who is the healer. And so when I point to you, and you can do it at home or wherever you are, uh, when I point to you, we're going to ask the Lord prayerfully, bring healing, bring peace. So if you can say that as I point to you, bring healing, bring peace. Lord, you are the great healer. Today we pray for those crippled by depression and anxious feelings, bring healing, bring peace. For those who suffer from chronic illness, disease, and pain, bring healing, bring peace. For those who are tormented by past trauma and hurts, bring healing, bring peace. For those who find it difficult to cope with tasks of daily living, bring healing, bring peace. For those who struggle with relationships, bring healing, bring peace. For those who hold on to pride, greed, and unforgiveness, bring healing, bring peace. And so we come to our God in a time of prayer. Heavenly Father, as you call us to worship, we come knowing that you are the one from whom we can ask anything. And Lord, we recognize that whatever our journeys are in life, we need your healing and we need your peace. And Father, as, as we think about those things, we recognize that some of it needs to come because of our own heart attitude, our own actions that hurt and harm others, our, our choices to not be giving and caring of others, Lord, we pray for your healing and your peace. But we also pray for your forgiveness as we don't extend that to others. And Lord, we know that you are quick to hear our prayer and you are quick to release us from our sins and our brokenness. We pray, Father, that as we come into this time of worship, we ask, that your spirit would come upon us. Open our eyes so that we might see the good things that you are doing. That we might see the things that you are calling us to. Open our ears that we might hear the cries of others. And that we might also hear your cry and your invitation and your words of comfort. Jesus, we pray that you would be present with us this morning. Amen. We worship Christ, whose assurance from Psalm 103 says this, He forgives all of our sins, and he heals all of our diseases. He redeems us from death and crowns us with love and tender mercy. He fills our lives with good things. We hear these words, and it's, yeah, it's, it's important for us to try and appropriate them and trust that God is a good God, and sometimes uh, he can feel so distant. But this is the one whom we worship. Our opening song this morning is I Surrender. Let's listen.
surrendering. It's one of the hardest things that we do. <laughs> Um, this morning, just as we reflect on our offerings, um, everyone from, from both congregations have received a notice uh, in terms of how Presbyterian World Service and Development is responding to Beirut. Um, the devastation there is unbelievable. Hundreds, uh, thousands of people homeless um, because it was the port. Um, their food sources also destroyed. Um, and so they are in great need. Initially, the Canadian government said they would match dollars to two million. They've upped it to five. So our monies that we give are doubled. And um, so between August 4 and 24, the Canadian government is matching all donations made to um, up to five million dollars through our memberships in the Canadian Food Grains Bank. Um, gifts to PW, s and are eligible to be matched. Here at Bembrook, um, we've been blessed with a surplus in our budget uh, because we're not using all of our monies normally as, as we would. And so um, $500 are coming out of our regular budget through uh, our mission and outreach team. And Session has determined an additional $500 from our budget will also go. So as a church, we are giving 1,000. Uh, we invite you that, that if you still want to respond, that you're able to do so through your gifts and offerings here. Why don't we just take a moment uh, to pray for Beirut. Heavenly Father, um, there is so much going on in the world and so much that needs your prayers and your love. But this morning, we want to just remember not only our brothers and sisters in Beirut, but all of those who have been hit by devastation there, homeless, hungry, injured. Heavenly Father, we pray um, for your hand upon them. We are so grateful, Jesus, for uh, Christian partners who are already there, who will ensure that our monies will make it uh, to the areas of greatest need, and we pray that you would grant them wisdom and uh, safety as they deliver food and resources and help. Jesus, we thank you for all that we have. We've been so blessed, and, and we just pray your hand um, upon our gifts that they indeed may reach um, the poorest of the poor. Jesus, we do this in your name, for you love them more than we ever can. Amen. As we uh, move into worship, we do these things so quickly now. Um, but again, just mindful of um, the uncomfortableness of having to wear a mask. And so our services are a little bit shorter than normal. Our message this morning, again, I'm, I'm just kind of taking you through um, some of the things that I learned um, and, and have continued to study from Henry and I, our trip to uh, Israel. And um, some of what I'm sharing comes from our tour guide and the messages that were shared there. So, um, yeah, I hope that that you'll, you'll enjoy this tour. I don't know about you, but everywhere you go, you're wearing a mask. And, you know, it just feels like you're terribly sick or you're looking at other people and you think they, they, they're looking terribly sick and wherever you go, including at the front doors, you're being screened. Have you had cough, cold, sniffle, um, you know, all of those kinds of questions. It's interesting to me that, that when I go to the doctor, you know, whether it's during COVID or or other times, you know, the, the doctor always asks you these screening questions, but rarely ever when you go to the doctor because you're not feeling well, does the doctor, one of his first questions is he looks at you and he goes, do you want to get well? Have any of you ever heard that question from your doctor when you've gone? There's a part of me that goes, why don't they ever ask me, do I want to get well? They, they literally never do. If, I mean, obviously, if they have to ask that question, I'd say, of course, that's why I'm here. But sometimes, maybe, when I go to the doctor, I'm just looking for the medication to manage my symptoms. 
maybe I've never thought about what it would look like if the doctor asked me, do you want to get well? Would I answer, well, I'm hoping you'll give me the right medication or the right pain management or something. Do I want to get well? What does that mean? Well, here in Israel, we entered into the pools of Bethesda. Now, this, of course, is ancient archaeology. Um, but imagine this area being filled with water. It's just located northeast of the temple, so where the worshipers of Israel would come. And as we look at this second uh, picture, I just ask you to imagine yourself sitting down there by the pool, waiting, longing for healing. And hear these words now from John 5. Some time later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for the Jewish festivals. Now, there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, I'm just going to take a moment here. The Sheep Gate, this is also known as the Lion's Gate, but it is, it is mentioned a few times in Scripture, and also by Nehemiah, he rebuilt it. The Sheep Gate is where the sheep came in. And when you walked into the temple area with the sheep, you would take them to the left to sacrifice them. Okay. They were unblemished sheep. So, now there is in Jerusalem the sheep gate, a pool which is in Aramaic, is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five colonnades. I want you to imagine Jesus, the unblemished sheep, unblemished sheep. He doesn't turn left to the temple at this point. He turns right to where all the sick, untouchables, and disabled are. You also need to imagine John, the writer of this gospel, who is the one who says, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Let's continue reading our scripture. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. Now, verse 4 on the next one is in red because you won't find it in your Bible. It used to be in the old Bible um, because it was added later. Somewhere along the line, someone doing Bible translations thought he needed to or she needed to explain why the pools were there. Um, So it's a footnote in your Bibles now because they discovered ancient uh, manuscripts weren't consistent with this verse. From time to time, an angel of the Lord would come down and stir up the waters. The first one into the pool, after each such disturbance, would be cured of whatever disease they had. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years, and when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Imagine yourself sitting by the pools of Bethesda, longing for some kind of healing, waiting for the waters to be disturbed so that when the angel stirs them, but you just can't get in. Perhaps you this morning may be connecting to your own issue, that problem, relationship, strife, addiction, aches, pains, emotional distress, heartache, physical pain. How might you respond if Jesus came to you sitting by the pool and asked, Do you want to get well? How might you answer your healer? Well, surprisingly, the paralytic doesn't say, Yes, Lord, I want to get well. Rather, he says this. Sir, the invalid replies, I have no one to help me in the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes in ahead of me. It's like he's compensating for his condition. Well, you know, life is so hard, I can't do it. It's almost like an excuse. Maybe he's been thinking for such a long time, you know, as soon as the angels stir the water, then I've got a chance. If only someone would help me, then my life would change. 
As soon as I'm healed, then I can start really living. He's stuck. Perhaps he only knows this one existence. Life stinks. Nobody cares. Nothing's going to change. He's discouraged. Perhaps he's given up hope. Perhaps he's become so familiar with his circumstances that when asked, do you want to be healed, he can't find the desire to say yes. Now one take on this is rather interesting in that because it's just north of the temple, temple worshipers would come out past the pools and those who were disabled would beg and perhaps it became quite a lucrative living do you want to be well well you know what i have no responsibilities i don't have to go to work every day and i still get everything i need who knows maybe you don't want to get well because the situation you're in seems to pay off for you somehow perhaps hopelessness has dragged him into the familiar You see, sometimes if you're sitting and you're waiting for healing, there comes this point where if you keep getting your hopes up and nothing happens, you feel disappointed and you don't know how to ask anymore. Maybe you've even stopped praying. Are you there this morning? Have you given up because healing just hasn't happened? Wherever that healing in your life needs to take place? Are you disappointed that God hasn't healed your circumstances and now you're sure he never will? And you just kind of sit there? You know, kind of like maybe how we feel about COVID. We've prayed for a time for the Lord to lift this up off of us and we're still here. And we're kind of feeling hopeless. We're kind of feeling like things won't change. And we just sit and go, yep, that's it. This is the way it is. You see, healing comes in many forms. Perhaps not always as we want or desire. You know, it's interesting if, if we read later, and the story is a little bit long, but the man is healed, and then he goes to the temple. We're not sure why. Quite often, disabled would need to have the priest say, yes, you're clean. And be declared that maybe that's what he was doing. But there the Pharisee said, what are you doing carrying your mat on the Sabbath? And he goes, oh, I don't know, some some other guy did this. Blame him. And and he kind of rats Jesus out. And then Jesus sees him and Jesus says, don't sin anymore. And so Jesus knows something about his heart that, that isn't disclosed in the scripture. And sometimes when we invite Jesus into healing, maybe we need to ask him, Lord, what do you know about my heart that needs to be disclosed so that I can be healed? Maybe not from my situation, but maybe from my attitude, maybe from my blaming others for my situation, maybe my despondency. And so we need to ask ourselves the question, have we settled into our own mat for 38 years or however long and started to give excuses for why we're there? Once COVID is over, then, then I'll have a normal life and then things can be good. But that person never listens to me and they'll never change, so I just don't even go there in our relationship. If only my spouse would do this or behave like that, then I would have a happier marriage. The bad things keep happening to me, so no wonder I have an addiction. I need it. If I had my physical abilities back, well, then I could do something for God and be useful. You see, Jesus, in this particular instance, isn't asking if you want your old life back. He's not asking if you, if you want your own desires fulfilled. No, Jesus is asking, do you want to get well? Really? Deeply so. You know, there, there were, there's a whole bunch of people that are sitting around this pool. And, and Jesus comes to one lame man out of the crowd. We'll go back to the last one there, Cam, sorry. 
The question is challenging because healing means moving into the unknown. You ever have that? You know, if, if I was healed from whatever my situation is, that means my life is going to change. I'm, I'm not going to be back in this place. Familiarity can be comfortable. See, when Christ brings healing, there is no going back. He's telling the man, pick up your mat. Get out of here. You're not going to leave your mat here for tomorrow because you're not coming back. And maybe for him that means his lucrative living is over. Maybe he needs to actually work at it from this point on. The call to get up is not the same as being helplessly carried either. The man had a choice. Laying there, he had to make a decision. If I get up right now, my life will change. Do I want that? Nah, (laughs) I think I'll just sit here. And sometimes we do just sit in our brokenness. He has to face his own excuses. If someone carries me into the pool and then I get well, then my life will be different. And Jesus is saying, okay, that time is now. And you don't even need the pool. Just get up and walk. There's a part of me that even wonders, was the man actually lame or was he just finding another way to pick up pogey, so to speak? When the man got up, Did his life change? We may never know. You know, as I stood over those pools and I imagined myself coming and looking over all the disabled, as as though I were coming out of the temple, I couldn't help but wonder how I would respond to seeing those disabled every day. I reflected on the many excuses the disabled in Bethesda heard from passers-by as they begged, please help me into the pool. Oh, I'm sorry, Um, I'm rushing off to meet my mother for coffee after church. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, (sighs) no muscles, can't do it. Oh, chain, oh, look, pockets are, I'm sorry, I've only got my visa card with its $30,000 limit, I, I have nothing for you. How do we as God's people, when we walk past people in need, respond to their plea? During COVID-19, homeless tent encampments have popped up. The downtown neighborhoods are upset. This is an eyesore. Look at all these people. I don't feel safe walking there. You know, it's a lot easier when all of this was hidden somewhere, maybe in the Salvation Army or into some of the other homeless drop-ins. What does it look like for us when we walk by to stop and ask, do you want to be made well? Do you want food? Do you desire housing? What do you think their answer is? might be. In a real sense, I recognize that we're all crippled by problems, crippled by circumstances, crippled by our own sin, our own greed, our brokenness, our own trauma, our past, our own physical ailments. And perhaps we have become comfortable with those conditions. The excuses are like a warm blanket that prevent us from seeing the hard, cold realities that in our plenty, others have nothing. That in our comfort zone, we've just accepted that this is the way things are. Then Jesus comes and he gives us this invitation, do you want to be well? Behold the Lamb of God who comes through the sheep gate and takes away the sin of the world, says and asks, do you want to be made well? Do you want Jesus to peel those parts of your life where you've been hurt? Or is it easier to hang on to anger? 
Do you really want to be healed of that addiction or does it just feel better to engage in whatever that addiction is, everything from shopping to substance to whatever your obsessive focus is? Do you really want to give that sinful thing up or are you having way too much fun doing it and go, ah, when I get older, he'll forgive the sins of my youth. I'm not sure when the youth cut off is because I'm sure some of us who are older still think that way. Do we want Jesus to heal our attitude or do we really like bitterness and jealousy? Do we want Jesus to heal our greed or would we rather watch our savings account go up while people in Beirut are homeless? I'm not trying to say that as a guilt trip. I'm saying it because I think there's, there's stuff in all of us that we just ignore. So that when Jesus asks us, do we want to be made well, we just kind of, we push it off. We go past that disabled pool and we ignore it. As a matter of fact, maybe we even decide to go out the east gate or the west gate or the south gate. But goodness, not the north gate where I have to look at all of that. Jesus says to the paralytic and he says to each one of us this morning, get up, pick up your mat and walk because there's freedom in everything that I have to offer there is freedom from your brokenness there is freedom of being stuck if you're uncomfortable with something seek Jesus and answer him yes Lord I want to get up I want to change and I don't want to go back What a blessing it is that God offers each and every one of us that invitation. But it's up to each one of us whether or not we're going to get up and leave the past behind. Thanks be to God. He has provided a way. Let's respond in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, you, you journey with us in ways we don't even know ourselves. Maybe the paralytic didn't even really understand what, whatever his brokenness was that was far beyond just being lame. Lord, you know each one of our hearts so well, and, and not only do you invite us to receive healing, but you invite us to not go back to not engage in that same attitude or brokenness or despondency or lack of hope. And so, Lord, we just cling to you this morning, and, and we want to just think again with the guidance of your Holy Spirit what it means for us to be well, what areas of our life need healing. And you alone can call us to that understanding and Lord, as we sang earlier, I surrender. We, we surrender this brokenness that we carry with us every day. And we want to say yes, we want to get well in all areas of our life, whether that be physical, emotional, spiritually, relationally, whatever, Jesus. We do want to get well because you are the God who makes a difference. And Jesus, we do want to keep healing, um, praying for healing in regards to COVID. It's true that we feel like we've settled in and it's hard to, to think otherwise because it's still all around us. But Jesus, call us to thankfulness. Call us to faithfulness in the midst of this. Call us to press forward outside of our own lives and still minister to others, whether it be a phone call or whatever. Heal us individually with our own despondency and loneliness. Our own desire to get well. Jesus, only you can meet us there. Father, we just pray your blessing on this world because we trust in you that you've got the whole world in your hands and that whatever is going on, you are working things out for your redemptive glory that you are still calling people to healing, you're still calling people towards forgiveness and mercy. You're calling us all to be 
unified even though we have been so separated. Jesus, our lives are in you and we rest in you alone. And we pray that whatever is on our hearts, Lord, this morning, the needs that we have, our call for healing, our prayers on behalf of others, our thanksgivings and our joys, we just offer them to you this morning, Jesus. And we're so grateful that you are the God who comes to us, picks us up out of the crowd because you love each and every one of us so deeply. We thank you that you know us and call us by name. To you be the glory. Amen. Let's respond with our final song this morning.
Please rise and receive the blessing of our God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ever asked or imagined, according to the great power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church through Jesus Christ throughout all generations, now and forever. Amen.